Hello. This is Mr. the single entity of AWIA. I've been wanting to make different content for the channel. So I will be delving into new subjects. The large majority of content on the channel deals with truth. True crime. 911 calls. And documentaries. But for this video, we will explore fiction. But before I carry on with this video. I would like to take a moment to thank you all for your support. I never realized there were so many other sick out there. I appreciate all the comments you guys have left on the videos. Even the ones calling me a a and a mother So, thanks again. Stay creepy. This video is the first installment of my new series. My Top 5s. In this series, I will give my thoughts, opinions, and my top 5 things from a specific category. Today, we are starting the series with my top 5 scariest characters from non-horror movies and television shows. I'm starting off big with a character from the best TV show of all time, The Sopranos. If you are watching this and you don't agree that The Sopranos is the best show of all time, you're wrong. There is no argument to have, it's the best. End of. Fight me. Admittedly, I could have chosen pretty much any character from the show as a candidate, there are so many to pick from. Tony. Syl. Polly. Chris. Ralphie. Phil. But. I've chosen. For me, Richie April is the scariest character from The Sopranos. I believe this is due to the fact he has absolutely no redeeming qualities or a shred of decency about him. For instance. With Tony, he is a loving father. He's humors. And he can be charming. That's the same for Syl. Polly. And the rest. But Richie was like a rattlesnake, he was mean, irritable, and always ready to attack. When he wasn't crippling someone with his car. He was plotting to whack Tony and his associates. I, for one, was rather glad when Janice ended their relationship. With two shots to the chest. Richie April was only in 10 episodes, but he certainly left a huge impression on me. Part of me wished we had seen more of him, but then again. Maybe not. Next up is the only female on this list. There have been many great, scary females in movies. But I have chosen. I chose Annie Wilkes for many reasons. The character, played to perfection by Kathy Bates, appears to be so sweet and kindly. The loving nurse that is helping her favorite author recover, following a car accident. But as the film goes on, her real self begins to show, and her full psychopathy becomes clear. The novel Misery, written by the brilliant Stephen King, created the character of Annie Wilkes, but Kathy Bates truly made it her own. It wouldn't have been half as impactful if Andy began the film as psychotic as she ended up being at the end. It had to be a gradual thing that unraveled the further we went with her. I challenge anyone to watch the hobbling scene and not be mesmerized and horrified in equal measure. For me, Annie Wilkes remains the scariest woman in any film. Well, in any non-horror film anyway. Regan, you will be on a different list girl. Next on the list is a character from one of my favorite comedies of all time, The League of Gentlemen. Again, like with The Sopranos, I could have chosen a number of characters, such as Tubbs and Edward, Hilary Briss, and the like. But I went with... I chose Papa Lazarou for one scene, in particular, which I will get to. But in Papa Lazarou, you have a character that is motivated by one goal. To obtain as many women as he can, to enslave as his wives. It does seem rather silly to try to deconstruct a character as bizarre as Papa Lazarou, but there you go. Video got a video. The aforementioned scene comes in the League of Gentlemen Christmas special, in a flashback where he kidnaps a screaming woman in front of her daughter. It is obviously written and performed for laughs, which it gets, but it's also deeply unsettling. Papa Lazarou doesn't try and persuade you or befriend you, he basically confuses you and manipulate you into becoming his wife. The League of Gentlemen manages to blend horror and comedy far better than those that have come before or after, and Papa Lazarou is the perfect mascot for horror comedy. If you haven't watched it yet, then please do. The town of Royston Basie is lovely, but you can never leave. The penultimate character on this list is the perfect embodiment of a sociopath. And that is... Told 
I remember the first time I watched Train Spotting, and still remember the feeling I got every time Begbie was on screen. My stomach would drop, and I was genuinely on tenterhooks, worried about what he was going to do. He was just so unpredictable and always ready to explode. Most of the characters in this film are pretty dreadful, in many different ways, but Begbie was on another level. He was not played in a flamboyant, unrealistic manner. Robert Carlyle played him brilliantly, played him as human as possible. We've all probably known someone like Begbie, although, hopefully not exactly like him. But we've probably known someone who is just plain trouble. Someone you avoid because you just know he will do something dangerous or criminal, something you just want no part in. There are plenty of themes, characters and subjects in train spotting that make me incredibly uncomfortable, but Begbie was always the worst. And that feeling has never dwindled over the years. Every time I delve back into the world of train spotting, Begbie still manages to unsettle me. It's what keeps me coming back. And finally, the last man on this list is My fucking money to sleep. You go get my money or I'll put your fucking brain to sleep. It was a toss-up between Joe Pesci's characters in both Goodfellas and Casino. But for me, Nicky Santoro from Casino just edged it. Nicky Santoro is like a rabid Jack Russell Terrier, he attacks, latches on, and never lets go. His small stature and his high-pitched, squeaky voice lulls you into a false sense of security, it's a complete juxtaposition between how he looks to how he acts. He is a relentless remorseless gangster who will go after anyone and everyone to get what he wants. There are two scenes in Casino that truly highlight Nicky Santoro's violence. In one, after his friend is insulted, he kills a man using a pen in a scene that is still hard to watch, no matter how many times I've seen it. The sheer brutality of this scene can turn the most stoic of stomachs. The second is when a man is tortured and has his head put in a vice, which Nicky tightens so much that the guy's eyeball pops out. That scene in particular has cemented Casino into movie folklore. It's usually the one scene everyone remembers. Nicky Santoro is a man you would love as an ally, but would absolutely hate to have as an enemy. It's not often that a character can completely dominate Robert De Niro, but Nicky Santoro does it effortlessly. For me, Casino is a masterpiece, and Nicky Santoro is one of the main factors. As a character, he is brilliant and brutal, 